Hello! Today we are going to be learning about the animals of the East African savanna habitat. Our learning targets for today are to identify similarities and differences between Arctic habitats and the desert habitat, identify characteristics of the grassland habitat, demonstrate an understanding of the word hardy, and then write and draw about the characteristics of the grassland habitat. Our key vocabulary for today are coexist, hardy, predators, and prey. Coexist is a verb and it means to live together peacefully. The cat and dog were able to coexist in my grandmother's house. Look, there's little baby Emmy and then there's Quinn. So cute. All right, next we have hardy. Hardy is an adjective and it means able to survive in tough conditions. Cacti are hardy plants able to survive in the harsh conditions of the desert. Predators. Predators are nouns. Predators are animals that hunt and kill other animals. Lions are large predators that hunt other animals living in the savanna. Prey. Prey is also a noun. Prey are animals that are hunted by other animals. So prey are hunted by predators. Many grasshoppers hide in the grass of the savanna so they don't become prey to the birds flying overhead. Bunnies are often prey to fox and coyotes, sometimes even people's dogs. So what were some of the similarities between the Arctic habitat and the desert habitat? So what were some things that were the same? Let's start there. They both had really extreme climates, right? And let's talk about each of their climates. And this is actually a difference. So the Arctic habitat, it was extremely cold, right? There was lots of ice and snow. Whereas the desert, it wasn't extremely icy and cold, right? It was extremely hot. It was extremely hot and it had lots of sand. Um, it didn't rain much. And because both of these places had such extreme climates, were there a lot of animals and plants or only a little bit of animals and plants? Only a little bit, right? So today we are going to be learning about another type of habitat called a grassland habitat. There are many grassland habitats in the world, but today you're going to be learning about one in particular, the East African savanna. Savanna is another word for grassland. This right here in the yellow is the East African savanna. Do you remember where the Arctic tundra was? Where was the Arctic tundra? It was right up here. It's all of this uh, land right above that line their line is like about here so that is the tundra okay what about the arctic ocean the arctic ocean is all of the water that's up top here okay how about the sonoran desert do you remember where the sonoran desert was the sonoran desert was right about here Remember our key vocabulary, we have coexist, hardy, predators, and prey. Listen carefully to find out how the East African savanna may be the same and or different from the Arctic and Sonoran habitats. Sorry, I gotta get to the right page. Rattenborough, your intrepid or fearless adventurer here to show you something a little different. We've been talking about habitats, the places where plants and animals live, and we've spent time in three of the most extreme habitats in the world, the freezing Arctic tundra, the Arctic Ocean, and the scorching Sonoran Desert. Now, I've come to a habitat that should be of great interest to you. Some of the most famous animals in the world live here. Welcome to the East African Savannah. Savannah is another word for grassland. 
a wide open, vast stretch of grass covered land. You know you're in a grassland when there's lots of grass around you, but not many trees or bushes. The East African savanna has very warm weather all year around. However, it only has two seasons, the rainy summer and the dry winter. The plants and animals that live here have had to adapt to these two very different kinds of weather in the summer and winter. Luckily, I brought my umbrella just in case it starts to pour. Boy, I can barely see a thing in all this grass. There's so much of it. As the name grassland suggests, grass is the most important plant growing in the savanna. The grasses are very hardy, which means they can survive through tough conditions of their habitat. Long spells of dry, hot weather, as well as heavy rainfall and flooding. The grass has adapted to these conditions by growing very deep roots. Even if the grass above ground is destroyed, the roots underground survive and the grass can grow back. This grass grows very quickly, as much as one inch per day. The grass in your backyard might take a whole week to grow an inch. Wow, that is some fast growing grass. Yikes, I'm surrounded by hooves. That's because grass is food for many of the larger animals like elephants, zebras, gazelles, and antelope. They chew on grass all day long. I don't think grass is all that tasty to tell the truth, but these animals depend on their nutrients, on the nutrients in the grass to survive. It's all they need to eat. Okay, remember that we talked about omnivores, carnivores, and herbivores um, in some of our other read-alouds. What was an omnivore? What kind of things does an omnivore eat? Plants and meat, okay? What about an herbivore? Only plants. What about a carnivore? Only meat. So what kind of... Uh, what kind, omnivore, carnivore, or herbivore, are zebras, if all they eat is grass? They're herbivores. It would seem that because so many of the animals eat the grass in the savanna every day, there wouldn't be much grass left after a while. But remember that this grass grows ve back very quickly, so there's usually plenty for the different herbivores, like zebras and antelopes, to eat. So what's a savanna? It's a grassland, right? Wide open space that has lots and lots of grass with not many trees or bushes. What's one thing, what's one animal you might see in the savanna? Zebras, antelope, elephants, gazelles, grass. Grass is not the only important source of food in the savanna. Many animals get their tr meals from the acacia, tr acacia tree. Giraffes with their long necks and tongues are able to eat twigs and leaves from the top of the acacia. Not only are giraffe's tongues long, but they're also very tough. It's a good thing too, because the twigs of the acacia tree are covered with sharp thorns that the giraffe eat, along with the twigs and leaves. So which word best describes the giraffes? Omnivores, carnivores, or herbivores? Herbivores. Also, look at that giraffe's tongue. All right. Ooh. Elephants eat grass and they like acacias too. The rest, they rest in acacia, the acacia's tree shade. Oh my goodness, I cannot read today. Let me try that whole one again, ready? Rewind. Elephants eat grass and they like acacias too. They rest in the acacias tree. I still can't say it. One more time. Third time's the charm. Here we go. Ready? Rewind. Elephants eat grass and they like acacias too. The, they rest in the acacias shade and eat the acacia leaves, branches, and seeds. They even like to strip off the bark and chew on it. So those elephants eat grass and parts of the acacia tree, right? And they didn't say anything about anything else. So they're eating grass and parts of a tree. So what kind of animal are they? Omnivore, carnivore, or herbivore? Herbivore, because they only eat plants. 
I think this acacia tree might be great to climb and get a better look at the savanna, but don't forget that it's covered by prickly thorns. Ouch! So the thorns on that acacia tree are small and they're very, very sharp, okay? They hurt. Acacias have adapted well to their habitat. Acacias have small leaves that don't dry out as quick as larger leaves would in the dry, hot months. The roots of an acacia grow very deep into the ground, which allows them to collect water from far underground when there's not much rainfall. And their sharp thorns help keep some animals from eating too many of the branches. These trees are right at home in this habitat. See, they have a just right home, just like we were talking about, just right homes. Animals living in the savanna have had to adapt to their habitat in many ways. Some animals, like the giraffe, have long, powerful necks so that they can quickly run away from predators. Sorry, not necks, legs. I don't know what's going on this morning, guys. We're going to try that again. Animals living in the savanna have adapted to their habitat in many ways. Some animals, like the giraffe, have long, powerful legs so that they can quickly run away from predators. Their long legs also help them travel long distances searching for food. Can you imagine a rat like me keeping up with a giraffe or a zebra? Not a chance. Now there's a little bird that's been sitting on this giraffe the whole time I've been watching. This is the oxpecker. Oxpeckers perch on the backs of large animals. This oxpecker will use its sharp claws to hold onto the, traf the giraffe who will hardly even know it's there. The giraffe and the oxpecker coexist. Remember, coexist means when two animals live peacefully together. Okay, it doesn't always have to be animals. You can coexist with somebody at your table too. But for this story, we're talking about two animals. The oxpecker feeds on the fleas and ticks living on the giraffe's body and warns the giraffe of any predators that might be trying to sneak up on it. In turn, the giraffe will let the oxpecker live on its back and provide the oxpecker food, fleas and ticks. It'll also provide it shelter and protection from predators. The oxpecker will spend most of its life on the giraffe's back. What a partnership. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Do you see him holding on? So here I am back in all this tall grass and I bet you can recognize the black and white stripes of the zebra I've just run into. Zebras are specially adapted to living in the savanna. They have strong, long legs that make them very good at outrunning lions and other predators. And the stripes on the zebra's legs and body don't just make it look pretty. They camouflage zebras against the grass so predators can't see it. Zebras eat the grass on the savannas so they are herbivores. Who remembers what camouflage means? Camouflage means that it makes it hard to see, right? They blend in. Over there, I see the largest land animal in the world. Can you guess what it is? This African elephant is very big and eats up to 400 pounds of trees and grasses every day. That's about the same as. The, the same amount as the weight of nine first graders. African elephants are adapted to the hot weather in the savanna. They have huge ears that they flap like, like fans to stay cool and keep away bugs. They also have thick skin that protects them from branches and thorns. Do you see the trunk on that elephant? An elephant uses its trunk for all sorts of things. The trunk is, of course, the elephant's nose for breathing, smelling, but the trunk is also used like a hand for lifting things, gathering food, or even holding on to other elephants' tails. Baby elephants or calves use their trunks to grasp other elephants' tails to keep them from wandering away from the rest of the herd and getting lost. Elephants also use their trunks to drink water. They suck up the water with their trunks and then they put the water into their mouth they use their trunks like a hose for showers and playtime, too. Man, I think I want to be an elephant. These animals are lions. Lions live in groups called prides. The females, or lionesses, do most of the hunting. They are carnivores that hunt zebras, elephants, and all kinds of other savanna animals. Most groups of lions have just one or two male lions. 
the male lion is huge and incredibly strong. It has a furry mane, powerful jaws, and fearsome claws. Unless this lion meets a stronger lion, no other animal in the savanna habitat can match the lion's strength and power. Animals that are hunted by predators are called prey. One of the lion's favorite prey to hunt and eat are zebras. Zebras try to use their camouflage, the camouflage of their stripes to hide in the grass of the savanna, so lions will not see them. My hair kind of looks like a lion mane, don't you think? Do I make a good lion? Up at the top of this tree, I can see and hear birds that are waiting for the lions to finish eating so they can have dinner. These birds are called vultures. A vulture is a scavenger, which, as you have learned, is an animal that eats leftovers. Who else was a scavenger? Rottenborough, the rat. All of the animals and plants you've learned about so far are part of something we call the food chain, which is illustrated in this image. What do you see at the bottom of this picture? What's right here? That is grass. What do you see here? A zebra, lion, and then it looks like that's dirt. Let's see. It is the savanna grass. The arrow points from the savanna grass to the zebra because the zebra eats the grass. The next arrow points from the zebra to the lion because you guessed it, the lion eats the zebra. The next picture after the lion is a picture of the soil because eventually the lion dies and its body becomes part of the soil. Then more grass grows out of that soil and it starts the food chain all over again. So a food chain is uh, the relationship of living things as food sources for other living things. Next, I think we should head to a habitat that is a bit closer to home and explore some plants and animals that might look quite familiar to us. But for now, I'm going to go check out more wildlife. I'll see you later. Okay, if you need to hop up and get a wiggle break in, go ahead and do that. Go. All right, I want you to describe the East African savanna. Let's talk about the climate. What's the weather like? Well, they have two seasons. One season is very dry and another season is really rainy, right? What kind of, uh, what kind of plants do they have? They mainly have grass, right? It's a grassland, so there's tons of grass. Do they have a lot of trees or just a little bit of trees? Just a few trees. How is the savanna similar to the Arctic tundra? So how are they the same? And the animals have adapted to both places, right? Also, some of the plants have adapted um, in both places. How is the savanna different from the Arctic? Well, the savanna has two seasons, dry and rainy, and it's cold all the time in the Arctic, so there's not much water for drinking unless the snow and the ice melt. The savanna is filled with really tall grass that grows quickly, and there's not much, but there's not much plant life in the Arctic, right? Those plants, they were really, really short, okay? And then also, there were some animals in the Arctic uh, savanna that coexist, right? We talked about the ox pecker and the giraffe, but we didn't really learn about any animals that coexist in the uh, Arctic. How about how is the savanna similar to the desert? Again, both animals and plants had to adapt to live there. And then what about those plants? What did they have? They had really deep roots, right? They had really deep roots so that those roots could go in and suck up all that water because they both have dry seasons. Well, the desert is pretty much always dry, but that savanna, they did have a dry season in which there wasn't much rain, so those plants had to really soak up every last drop of water that they could find. All right, um, how is it different? 
That the savannah had that one really rainy season, and the desert never gets a rainy season, does it? Okay. What were some of the plants that lived in the savannah? The acacia tree, which was a favorite of the elephants and the giraffes. And what else? There was one thing that was all over the place. Grass, okay. What about some of the animals? What kind of animals lived in the savannah? Zebras, lions, elephants, giraffes, antelope. I almost called it cantaloupe. All right, and are giraffes, elephants, and zebras herbivores, carnivores, or omnivores? They're herbivores. How did you know that? Because they eat only plants, right? What about a lion? That's a carnivore, right? Because they eat the zebras and the antelope and elephants and giraffes. They eat all of those other animals. How do the oxpecker and the giraffe coexist? How do they coexist? Meaning, how do they live together? The oxpecker lives on the giraffe, right? And it eats all the bugs off of the giraffe. And then it also will warn the giraffe when predators like lions are coming, right? And then what does the giraffe do for the oxpecker? Helps it travel, keeps it safe, gives it food and shelter. Okay. Time for our word work. In the read aloud, you heard, the grasses are very hardy, which means they can survive through the tough conditions of their habitat. Long spells of dry, hot weather, as well as heavy rainfall and flooding. Say the word hardy with me. Hardy. Can you say it in a whisper voice? Hardy. Can you robot voice it? Hardy. All right. When something is hardy, it means that something is able to survive in tough conditions. Many plants that live in extreme climates have hardy exteriors in order to survive there. I'm going to give you, oh, sorry. The opposite of or antonym of hardy is weak. So if hardy means strong, the opposite of it would be weak, right? I want you to listen to the following examples. If I describe something that is hardy, I want you to say, that is hardy. If I describe something that is weak, say, that is weak. Acacias have deep roots that collect water when there is not much rainfall. That is hardy. Don't sit on the patio furniture because it's old and it might fall apart. That's weak. The soldiers stayed strong despite the unbearable heat and dry conditions of the desert battlefield. That is hardy. The saguaro cactus has prickly spines and deep roots for living in the desert. That is hardy. After several um, very hot, sunny days, the new paint on the front porch started to peel. So that paint's coming off. That's weak or not hardy. All right, did we identify similarities and differences between the Arctic habitats and the desert habitat? Mm -hmm. Do we identify characteristics of the grassland habitat? Absolutely. Do we demonstrate an understanding of the word hardy? You betcha. And then in just a minute, you are going to write and draw about characteristics of the grassland habitat. Have a wonderful day. I will see you next time.